What do you notice about this Torco card? Seems pretty innocent, right? Might not look too familiar though, eh? That's because it's from the pop series of 2004 cards. These were given out to players who participated in local leagues and events as an extra incentive to get players to compete. Pretty much the same as the play promo packs we get today. Back in 2004 though, these packs only had two cards in them, making it very hard to find the rare ones. But in my opinion, this little Torco is my favourite from the bunch. Why is that? Because look at it! It's a fighting type! Like how? In the games, Torco is a pure fire type. So how has this little silly but cute Torco been printed as a fighting type? I mean, sure, it looks like it could be a ground or a rock type, but it isn't. Oh my goodness. And in a very similar vein, I'm wanting to look at this very nice reverse hollow Dialga card from the Platinum set. I do think the artwork is a bit funny though, because it looks like it's floating amongst this picturesque sunset. But I don't want you to look at the sunset. Instead, I want you to look at this monstrosity. Yep, somehow this Dialga is now a normal type. This makes zero sense. If we consult the Pokedex, Dialga is clearly a dragon metal type. So colorless, or normal, makes zero sense here, just like the talk hole from earlier. Speaking of our boy Dialga, next up it's Cyrus. He's a bit of a dastardly geezer in the video games, since he successfully kidnaps Uxi, Azoth and Mesprit and uses them to summon Dialga or Palkia to cause massive mayhem. And in Platinum, this causes Giratina to show up and give him a big telling off. I, however, am not concerned with the video game. And instead, I want you to look at this Prism Star card. Now, Cyrus has only had two other cards, not including Boss's Orders. Both Cyrus's Initiative and Conspiracy were both a bit good. So my theory here is that Cyrus, amongst all that pressure of being a constant metagame titan, has decided to bend the walls a little bit. You see, what this card was meant to do is that if you have a water or metal Pokemon in the active, then your opponent chooses two of their bench Pokemon and shuffles them back into their deck. And while this is a strong effect, it's balanced by the fact that you have to have a water or metal type in the active, which at the time wasn't traditionally the strongest of types. However, when old Cyrus hopped on his flight from Japan to the US for his English translations, he was a little bit naughty and decided to remove the active part on his text. So all he had to do was have a water or metal type Pokemon in play, full stop. This made Cyrus fully broken as the previous balancing factor was thrown away. Luckily, this was corrected in future prints of the card and the old versions were subject to an errata so it could only be used as intended by the sneaky people that tried to use the old version. Moving on from Cyrus to an oldie but goldie, we're now looking at Dark Vile Plume. I adore this card. The Pokemon power name is Hay Fever and as someone who suffers from it myself, it makes me a bit sad to think about. What I absolutely adore though is how ready for business this Vile Plume is. Look at that face. However, it's not all fun in games because this vile plume is hiding a sneaky little error. Have you seen it yet? Look at that weakness. Now, it was corrected to fire in future prints, but out the gate, vile plume was weak to fighting? This makes no sense because vile plume isn't weak to ground or rock and actually resists fighting. Strange times indeed. Another dark Pokemon that's telling Porky Pies is Croconore. Now look at this little fella. He looks all well and good, right? Maybe slightly mischievous. That clamping draw attack could even be used in a pinch. Weakness looks right. So what could be wrong here? Take a time, have a look. Let's see if you guess it. Oh, you didn't? Let me help you out then. Let's look at that Pokedex description. It has 49 teeth in its mouth that are constantly replacing themselves. Pull one out and a new one grows in. Apart from Croconaw needing a pretty good dentist, what is wrong then? Well, in fact, viewers, Croconaw does not have 49 teeth. It has 48, as confirmed by literally every other Pokedex entry. Oh dear. We all know Team Rocket are masters at causing mayhem, which we'll soon get into. From taking over the radio towers to forcing Magikarp to evolve, they are always up to no, no good. And maybe it was their over eagerness about evolution that made them write some funny text on this Rocket Cypher card. Since its shadow images attack forces your opponent to flip a coin whenever they want to attack the Cypher. If they flip tails when attacking, the Rocket Cypher takes no damage. And this effect remains live until the Cypher hits the bench or evolves. Wait a second. Hold up. Cypher couldn't evolve at this time, it was Gen 1. 
So why do they have to mention that? Very interesting. Did Team Rocket accidentally leak Scissor on purpose before Gen 2? Maybe so. This next one fully cracks me up. Grimer is one of those Pokemon that you just can't hate. And it's one of my best friend's favorite Pokemon. So I've always had a sweet spot for it. And this Grimer also seemed to have its attack confused a little bit. Let me show you why. So its attack is called Poison Gas, but it actually can't poison the opponent. It only puts them to sleep. Shouldn't it be called Sleepy Gas then? And what makes this even more funny is that in Gen 1, Grimer couldn't learn a single move that could put the opponent's Pokemon to sleep. So TCG Grimer's got some fun talents, but the, but the video game Grimer in Gen 1, well, he needs to get his skills up. <laughs> so now we're going to move on to the evolution part of the video, where cards have seemingly forgotten the rules of evolution, or have just forgotten Pokemon altogether. Such as this Combuscan card from the Battle Stadium. What's wrong with it? Have a look. Mainly at the evolution part. Apparently, Combuskin is a stage 2 Pokemon now. So is Blaziken the stage 1 in this scenario? Well, no, because Torchic is a stage 1 apparently. So is Blaziken the basic? Huh, that's interesting. Does Blaziken even exist anymore? I bet Roxanne would be a lot easier in the games if you could start off with a Blaziken. Have that sky uppercut. Oh my goodness. Next up is Wartortle, who apparently evolves from itself. The Blastoise still evolves from the War Turtle according to the Blastoise card. So does that mean Squirtle doesn't exist? Does Professor Oak give you a War Turtle, then it evolves into a slightly different War Turtle, and then you get Blastoise? Hmm, that makes me sad. Who doesn't love Squirtle? Oh my goodness. This Dragonite card from the Storm Rider theme deck is also up to no good, since now Dragonite is a stage one, apparently, with Dragonair becoming the basic. Sorry, Dratini, but this <laughs> actually terrifies me. Imagine the absolute horror if Dragonite could actually evolve again. What in this universe could Dragonite evolve into? And if Dragonite stays the same, could you imagine Dragonite using Eviolite with multi-scale too? Oh my Arceus. And little old Hophip. This Hophip is one of the worst. It's hiding a dark secret. This card comes to us from Dragon's Exalted. Yep, that's right. Absolutely unbelievable. Have you noticed it yet? This is not a Hop-Hip entry at all. The Pokedex entry here is in fact for a Skip Loom. How could you Hop-Hip? You lied to me like that. Next up, we have another innocent but sinister card. This time, it's Seal. And shout out to a children's card game who forcibly says that Seal is not an ice type, so it shouldn't be Metal Weak. That is actually true, so fair play. However, we are not concerned about that. Instead, we are concerned about Seal's weight. You see, if you compare the weight of the Seal from this card from Fates Collide, it only says 41 pounds. But in the Pokedex, it should be 200 pounds. So that makes this seal right here either really, really, really conscious about his weight or is genuinely a very, very light seal. I'll let you decide. But next up is the grand finale and the inspiration for me to make this video. Bang! That's right, let's look at this Dragonair card. It's been lying to us all, right to our faces. And no one's realized in the 24 years it's been since it's been printed. You see, this Dragonair is a cheat. An absolute liar. It should not be able to use Slam. It's only level 33 and Dragonair learns Slam at level 35. And before you start to get cheeky in the YouTube comments, I'm talking about its Gen 1 moveset. Also, while I was editing, I came across this Erica's Dragonair card. Since when does Erica have a Dragonair? But Dragonair isn't the only offender of this trickery. You see, Mewtwo, in its infinite wisdom, has somehow transcended the laws of its own Gen 1 moveset, as he has learned Barrier at level 53, but he actually learns it at level 63. Naughty, naughty Mewtwo. However, you won't catch me telling Mewtwo off, because, uh, well, look what he done to the lab. Oh, my goodness. Next up is Doug Trio. It can clearly use the attack Earthquake here for a, well, very painful four straight fighting energy at level 36. But in Gen 1, it learns at level 47. But since Earthquake is a TM in Gen 1, I'll let Doug Trio off. It is actually possible. Ghastly, 
<laughs> Ghastly from Basic can't even learn Destiny Bond, so I don't know what this one's on about, to be honest. And Tangler. Well, Tangler is a low key underrated mod. Just look at its most recent card. Tactful. What's, the, what's it called again? Tactful. Tactful. Tactful Tangling. Look at him just swinging from the vine without a care in the world. Tactful Tangling is also one of the best attack names of all time. However, we can't let Tangler off and get weak knee just because of that though. I'm sorry, Tangler, I can't. This Tangler from base set knows Poison Powder at level 8. In Gen 1 though, it learned Poison Powder at a, seems very high, level 32. That makes it one of the worst offenders on this list. It doesn't matter how cute you are swinging on that vine, use her a very, very cheeky. But it's not just base set cards though. Because this Leafeon from Majestic Dawn might be the most egregious example of level skipping in action. Because it clearly has access to Leaf Blade at level 40, but in Gen 4 it learns it at 71. Fira gets the award for being a repeat offender here. Because in Majestic Dawn and its base set cards, it has access to Drill Peck at level 29 and 27. When both are cheeky, since it learns it at 34 in Gen 1 and 47 in Gen 4. Fero, absolutely outrageous. But shout outs to my bestie Demetrius Eaton who got second place at Toronto Regionals. His favorite Pokemon is Poliwhirl. Despite that though, I cannot let this slide because that Poliwhirl in Neo Discovery clearly has access to Belly Drum at level 35, but it doesn't learn it until level 43. And Poliwhirl's base set card has Amnesia which it can't even learn in Gen 1. And base set Polyrath has the attack Whirlpool, which wasn't even a move yet. Maybe Polyrath was doing a bit of foretelling for Gen 2 maybe, but still interesting. So that makes the Polyrath line another repeat offender. And to be honest, I'm not happy about it. For this next one, we're gonna have to look at a Chilling Rain Elite Trainer box. Doesn't matter if it was a blue one or a purple one, cause to be honest, we don't care about the box. We care about this. That's right. The player's guide. Now normally these have some cool things like card interactions and set lists and some pictures of the cards all well and good. However, for the Chilling Rain one, there was a bit of an oopsie daisy. See it says here in the guide that Single Strike Houndoom with its ability Single Strike War will be able to attach impact energies from the deck. However, it was actually ruled that this is not the case. This is due to the fact that Single Strike War can only accelerate Single Strike Energy, where the card is actually called Single Strike Energy. Not special energy cards that are, well, Single Strike Energy, but not named Single Strike Energy. Either way, it's the same reason why, it, but it makes me sad because if Houndoom could accelerate Impact Energy, you would have been able to have an effective eight Single Strike Energy cards, which maybe Single Strike could have been even stronger. Who knows, makes me a bit sad. If you want to cheer me up though, why don't you check out this video here, where I look at how the Popo community has just been exposed pretty bad. And why don't you check out this video sponsor Dragon Shield at the link below. If you are going to buy anything, use my code BERTS to get the best accessories in the game hands down. Get yourself a little bit of money off and it helps me out too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.